We're going to talk more about cycle decompositions in this video and to start off with we're going to give a nice definition up here which says that a graph whose vertices all have even degree is called an even graph and that makes the statement of the theorems a little bit more easy and what we'll do is we'll start off by proving this theorem here. A graph G admits a cycle decomposition if and only if G is even. So this is the same as saying if and only if all the vertices of the graph have even degree. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this is done. And the first part of the proof is fairly straightforward because if we've been watching the videos on Euler tours, we'll see that a lot of similarities in the first direction. Now, what we're going to do is start off by assum assuming that there is a cycle decomposition. So let's go this direction. So suppose there is a cycle decomposition. Suppose there is a cycle decomposition, I'll write decomp for decomposition of G. Now take any vertex, any vertex in the graph and we're going to look at the degree of this vertex. Now either V is isolated because we didn't say whether or not the graph was connected so it could be disconnected. Either V is isolated in which case the degree of V is going to be zero. So if it's not isolated, then it's going to have to lie on some cycles. And it could lie on more than one cycle. It could be that it belongs to only one cycle or it could be that it belongs to many cycles. So the other option is that V belongs to some number of cycles. Some number of cycles in the decomposition. And if that is the case, let's say that k is the number of cycles. So let's say that this sum number, let's have that be k cycles. All right, well, what are we going to do now? We just are going to think about the degree of the vertex V, so I'll just scroll down so we can take a look here. Here's vertex V and maybe it belongs to only one cycle in which case it has degree 2 or maybe it belongs to two cycles like another one over here in which case it would have degree 4 or maybe even more cycles and as we can see that regardless of how many cycles, just some number, there will be twice as many edges which are incident with V. So then the degree of V is equal to 2 times K, where K was just the number of cycles of the decomposition that are incident with the vertex V. So that was the two cases. Either it was isolated, which had degree 0, or it belongs to some cycles, and then it still has an even degree. So all for all vertices of the graph the degree of that vertex is even, is even. So that's the first direction of the proof. Now let's take a look at the theorem again. The theorem says that it's going to be if and only if the graph is even. We'll have a cycle decomposition. So now what we have to do is suppose that the graph is even and show that there is a cycle decomposition. And we're going to do that using induction. In fact, we will use strong induction and a good review of the principle of mathematical induction is given in a previous video which was titled there exists a three regular graph of all even orders at least four. So in that video we used mathematical induction to prove that theorem and we also gave a description of how mathematical induction works. So for a review of induction you can take a look at that video. So let's go ahead and start with the other direction. We are going to now show our aim is to show that G even implies that G has a cycle decomposition. I'll just write decomp for decomposition. So that's what we want to do. So what we're going to do is using mathematical induction we have to take a look at first the base case. And the induction is going to be done, we're going to do induction 
on the number of edges of the graph. So the basis case is the smallest number of edges of the graph. So it's possible that there are no edges. And what happens then? Well, it means that we have a graph with some number of vertices and there are no edges. So maybe it's only one vertex or maybe there are several vertices, but regardless, there are no edges and there is a trivial cycle decomposition where the family of cycles is the empty set. So the decomposition is the trivial empty decomposition. So the base case is done. Now we'll continue by giving the inductive hypothesis. I'll con abbreviate that as int-hype for inductive hypothesis. And the inductive hypothesis is going to suppose that for all even graphs on less than m edges, there exists a cycle decomposition. And because this is strong induction, we are supposing that for all even graphs on less than m edges, the, um, the claim holds. And what we want to do is show that when we have m edges, the claim will still hold. So what we're doing is we're using strong induction and now we have to look at a graph with m edges and show that using the inductive hypothesis, we will be able to um, give an, a cycle decomposition of that graph. So let's go ahead and do that. Now we have a graph, take G to be even and to have M edges. So our goal is to now show that this graph G has a cycle decomposition. So our first step is to realize that G is not necessarily connected. So what it does look like is it has um, all of the vertices have even degree. So some of them might have zero degree. So they might just be isolated like that. And then we might have other parts of the graph which um, are not isolated and they might have so some sort of even degree like this. And it might not be just one more component like that. There could even be other components like this. So in general, we could have a bunch of different components. Some of them could have many cycles or only one cycle or even isolated vertices. But in general, what we want to do is ignore the vertices that are isolated like this. So what we want to take is I'm gonna let X be the set, the set of vertices of the graph with degree bigger than zero, so positive degree, not these isolated vertices. All right, and now what we want to do is let F be the subgraph of G induced on the set X. So this looks fancy, but what it means is that this stuff here is the set X, the stuff with positive degree, so I'll highlight it in yellow. That is our set X. And when we take the graph induced on those vertices, we are literally taking this graph here highlighted in yellow because the set X is exactly these vertices here. And when we take the induced graph, we get the graph here highlighted in yellow. So this is the graph F. All right, now we'll take a look at the graph F. And we have to observe that because G is even, F is also even. In fact, the only difference is we've eliminated these vertices which had zero degree. So this is also an even graph, an even graph. But not only that, in this graph, we know that there are no vertices with degree zero. So in F, all vertices have degree at least two. Degree at least two, because all the vertices have even degree and none of them have degree zero. And now, if you recall, we actually had an entire video that explained that if you have a graph in which every vertex has degree at least two, then there exists a cycle in that graph. And the, the title of the video was actually degrees at least two means a cycle exists. So let's take a look at what this will give us. 
this will give us the fact that there is a cycle. There is a cycle in F. Of course, the way I've drawn this little example, we could see that there was a cycle, but we don't know exactly what G looks like, so therefore we don't know exactly what F looks like. But what we do know is that all of its vertices have degree at least 2, so we have a theorem that tells us there is a cycle in F. And I'm going to call it C. Call this cycle C. Oops. So we have found one cycle in the graph F. And what we want to be able to do is to use the inductive hypothesis. Now recall, the inductive hypothesis said that the claim is true for, ver for graphs which have less than m edges. So what we're going to do is use the technique of removing the cycle C, removing those edges, and take a look at the remaining graph. So we're going to do that now. What we'll do is we'll take G prime to be a new graph which is G without the edges of the cycle C. And it should be very clear that because G is even, in other words, all of the vertices have even degree, and we re removed a cycle, the remaining graph will also be an even graph. An even graph. And this is explained very easily by noting that for any vertex in the graph G, either it does not lie on the cycle C, in which case its degree stays the same in this change when we've removed these edges, and then it's still even, or it did lie on the cycle C. So it had um, an even number of edges to begin with, and then two of the edges, in particular the ones that belong to C, got removed. So whatever its degree used to be, minus two will still be even. So that's why we know that G prime is an even graph. However, G prime has fewer edges. And we know this because there were some edges that belonged to C that we removed. So G prime is an even graph with less than M edges. So by the inductive hypothesis, by the inductive hypothesis, G prime has a cycle decomposition. A cycle decomp. And we're going to call it, I'm going to use a sort of a curly C prime to denote many cycles. It's a family of cycles and I'm denoting it by prime because it belongs to G prime. Okay, but there's not a huge difference between G prime and G. G is the same thing as G prime, but together with another cycle. So that's great. All we have to do is take all of these cycles and tack on cycle C, and that will give us a cycle decomposition of our original graph. So now, if we take our curly Q calligraphy style C to be a cycle decomposition of our original graph. It's simply the cycle decomposition for G prime together with the original cycle which belonged to the graph F and we removed it from the graph G. So this cycle decomposition right here in red could have any number of cycles in it. We tack on this last one and we have a cycle decomposition. So this is a cycle decomposition of the original graph, of the original graph G. So that was not too bad and we were able to achieve our result using strong induction on the number of edges of the graph. So that completes the proof and we should review what we have shown is the fact that a graph will admit a cycle decomposition if and only if that graph is even. And in fact, this statement of this theorem should sort of ring a bell because we did a video on Euler tours. We know that a graph is Eulerian if it has an Euler tour. And we know that such a graph or a graph is Eulerian if and only if it is even. So in, in fact turns out to be equivalent the graph will be Eulerian if and only if it also has a cycle decomposition. So we can go ahead and review this just by writing down what we already knew. 
We also know that a graph is Eulerian. Remember, Eulerian means there is an Euler tour. So it's Eulerian if and only if it's even. And we also know now that it's even if and only if it has a cycle decomposition. So now we really know that a graph is Eulerian if and only if it admits a cycle decomposition. And although Eulerian and cycle decomposition might feel similar because they have the same feel to them, um, you're in this case, in the Eulerian case, you're looking for an Euler tour. And remember that an Euler tour can have repeated edges. Can have, oh sorry, can't have repeated edges, but it can have repeated vertices. Can have repeated vertices. So when you're making your Euler tour, you can repeat across a vertex that you've already used, but you have to travel through the entire graph using every edge only once and returning to where you started. And a cycle decomposition is actually quite different. What you're looking for here is to decompose the edges, the edges of the graph, into a bunch of different cycles. Um, I'll call them C1, C2, C3, and I don't know how many of them there are, CK. So a family of cycles. And these can have any lengths, of any lengths. So here we're actually finding many cycles, and here we're only finding one tour. And remember that a tour is not the same thing as a cycle. So although these things have the same sort of feeling because they have the same characterization in that they exist if and only if the graph is even, the actual act of finding an Euler tour or finding a cycle decomposition is quite a bit different.